There ought to be a praise ringing in your soul. Matthew chapter 7, and we read verses 7 through 12 a few moments ago. And I want to just wrap you up on verse 12. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, beginning, and we read our whole section is verses 7 through 12. But let me just hit verse 12 again. It says, So in everything, do to others what you have done to them and done to you. For this sums up, excuse me, I'll read it again. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. I want to minister from the subject today. It's not complicated. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not complicated. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's not complicated. It, 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 it's not. It's not. Let's, let's, let's ask God for help. Amen. God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you give us everything we stand in need of in this moment. Speak, Holy Spirit, so we might grow in grace and understanding. I'm praying, Lord, for those under the sound of my voice in the building and those that are listening online. I thank you, Lord, for their online presence. Continue to allow them to share the word virtually to all those that are out there. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Now, Lord, we ask the same prayer that you give us an anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Give us the understanding that we need for you on your word. In Jesus' name, and all the people of God said, amen. It, it, it's not complicated. It's not, it's not complicated. That means it's not tricky. It's not hard. It's not complicated. How many of y'all know folk can make stuff that's not complicated real complicated? Amen. Folk can make stuff that's simple and easy, uh, difficult and hard. But I'm here to let you know when it comes to the Lord, he's saying it's not complicated. Amen. Can I get you to say it with me? It's not complicated. Praise God. Now, I, I, I'm going to take you back a few days ago in the week. Um, my wife um, has several shows that she likes to watch. I have several shows that I like to watch uh, during the week. And uh, uh, one of the shows that I normally catch her on is a show called The Voice. Is that right? It's The Voice. And, and The Voice is various people uh, that are trying to uh, make a name for themselves and uh, grow in the music industry. And they have talents. And they, they're, they're there to f uh, showcase their voices to a panel of judges who are experienced and well regarded and awarded in their industry and during the week um, I caught it this week and there was a young lady I'm not sure how to pronounce her name it's Azan or Azan, um, Azan, I'm sorry, Azan, and she was, my wife knew, that's why I was just testing her to see if she was paying attention. Uh, <laughs> her name, Azan, and Azan sang a song this week called X Factor. That's a Lauren Hill song for Lawrence, Lauren, Lauren Hill's Grammy Award winning, winning record years ago called The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, and that song uh, starts off with a ridiculously compelling opening line. It says this, it could all be be so simple but you want to make it hard Oh man, that thing, that thing hit me like a rock. I, I loved that song years ago, and then when the young lady sang it this week, it, it spoke to my spirit and, 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 and reminded me um, that, you know, Lauren Hill was not the originator of those words. It could all be so simple. Amen. Jesus says these words in Matthew chapter 7. It could all be so simple. The folk have made the things of God difficult and hard when in reality, uh, it could all be so simple. It's not complicated, but the religious folk had made it hard. They had turned the simple faith into hundreds of rules and rituals that made it hard for the folks to know what they really should be doing for the Lord. But Jesus comes to correct the false teaching, the surface level commitment, and the ways in which folks justify their sin. Jesus says it's not complicated. Uh, there, there are many ways in which religion and religious folks have complicated the faith. But today we want to remind you that it's not complicated to honor God and it's not complicated to follow his commands. Pleasing God is not about trying to fulfill the pleasures of the flesh. You won't get rewarded by God by trying to please people or trying to look religious. You won't garner the favor of God by doing the least of the commandments while ignoring the greatest of the commandments. Jesus is saying that it's about asking, seeking, knocking, and treating others the way you want to be treated. 
Uh, here in this text, he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find not and the door shall open. And then he says, uh, but if, you, and if all you need is treat one another the way you want to treat God, people to treat yourself and you have summed up the law and the prophets. It, it's not that complicated. Uh, this section of scripture is one of three summaries of the Sermon of Mount. The Sermon of the Mount is contained uh, in chapters 5, 6, and 7 of the book of Matthew. It is uh, Jesus teaching his disciples all sorts of wonderful things, and he concluded it with that sermon we preached a few weeks ago about if you hear what I preach and you hear what I teach, Jesus says, and you can apply it to your lives, you will be like one who plants his house on a uh, builds his house excuse me on a rock when the winds the waves the storms come you're going to keep on standing but if you hear my words and don't apply them don't put them in your life don't make them part of your life you're like one who builds his house on the sand when the winds the waves turmoils and struggles of life come you will crumble like a cheap suit and fall and be washed away by the trials and tribulations of his life so Jesus summarized his sermon by saying if you pay attention you like building something you're like you're like one who builds his house on a rock. And then on last week, he did that other summary where he says, at the end of all of my teaching, you got three questions you ought to answer. Amen. Three questions that you ought to answer. Amen. Which path will you take? The narrow or the wide? Because he's shown you which one you should take. And then who will you learn from? Who will you listen to? Will you listen to false teachers, false preachers? Amen. Will you listen to the world or will you listen to the Lord? And then the third question, which kind of disciple are you going to be? Are you going to be a shallow uh, a shallow commitment Christian? Are you going to be a, beloved, a lover of the Lord who's seeking after God with all his his heart, mind, soul, and strength. Which path will you take? Who will you listen to? And what kind of disciple you're going to be? After hearing everything Jesus said, he said, you'll be like one built up on a rock. You'll be like one who follows the narrow path. You'll be like one who listens to truth. And you'll be a disciple, amen, who is a true to the Lord. And then here is the third summary. We haven't even gotten to what he says in the Sermon of the Mount. He just said what he said. If we, After hearing what I said, you should apply it. After hearing what I said, you ought to be able to answer the question. I'm following the narrow path. I, I'm seeking out the truth, and I'm trying to be a real disciple. And here's the third summary of what he said. He says, he says, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and it shall be found. Knock, and the door shall be opened. For whoever asks will receive, and whoever seeks will find. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you? If his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to get, give gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you've done, have them do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophet. So Jesus gets down. He says, now, what, what, what the religious folk have tried to do, they tried to make it complicated. What he did in the Sermon on the Mount, which we'll study in the next couple of weeks, he took what they made complicated and made it simple. Oh, I like that. I love it that when someone can take something complicated and make it simple. When we get into the meat of the Sermon on the Mount contained in chapters 5 and 6 in this book, we will see Jesus breaking down the important issues of the kingdom of God. He will correct them on what they have heard and what they are taught. He'll say something like this, you heard this, but let me teach it a little better. And then he says, you've seen this, but let me show you a little better. He corrects them on what they've heard. He corrects them on what they've seen. He highlights how they have treated each other wrongly and shows them how they ought to treat and govern their relationships. He points out them that, that what others have tried to show them how it pleases God to what really pleases God. And all this comes to a conclusion when he says it's about asking, seeking, knocking, and treating others the way you want to be treated. Jesus takes what folks have made complicated and simplifies it down to four key points. Matter of fact, in, in Matthew, he even takes it down to two, to four points, down to two points. He says, in, in Matthew, we're talking about, you know, asking, seeking, knocking, and treating others as you want to treat yourself. He breaks it down even smaller and says, it's all about this, loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Jesus uh, uh, teaches us how to simplify 
Amen. He says, it's not complicated. It's simple. Uh, I was teaching a fraction. As a matter of fact, this year, if you've you got a fifth grader in, in Virginia, we're doing fractions and fraction equivalents and decimal equivalents all throughout the state. All fifth grade classes ought to be in this strand, 5.2 of our, our standards of learning, where we're teaching fractions and, and we're teaching kids how to simplify and how to reduce fractions. And, and some of the fractions, we just want the kids to know it. Amen. There's a way to divide it and figure it out. We just want you to know some fraction. We call those benchmark fractions and benchmark numbers. We teach them how to simplify. Uh, and, 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 and we teach them that a half is 0.5. Five tenths, or could be also written as five hundredths, or, or some of y'all know it as fifty percent. That's one half. Um, uh, we teach them. We want them to just memorize that. So when they see six twelfths, they know that six is half of twelve. So six twelfths must be a half. That means it must be also five tenths or fifty hundredths, uh, or simply as a half. They're able to do this without even having to work it out. And so if they see two hundred over four hundred, they know that's just a half. That means it's five tenths and fifty hundredths. Uh, if they see a thousand over two thousand, they ain't got to do the math. They ought to know that's just half. That's point five. That's decimal five. That's five tenths, fifty hundred. We teach them how to simplify a fraction just by knowing. It ought to be a recall. Amen. They ought to be able to see a big number, see that it's complicated as the test takers want to make it, and still see that's just one half. And Jesus said the religious leaders, like the test takers of standards of learning, trying to make it complicated, but it's just one half. And so Jesus simplifies it. He said the religious folks and leaders, they try to make it complicated. They try to make the word of God, the will of God complicated. But Jesus is the master teacher, and he comes along and says, I see all this stuff y'all been learning, but let me make it simple for you. Let me, let me, let, it's just asking, seeking, knocking, which is how we govern our relationship with God, and then treating others the way we want to be treated, the way we treat one another. Oh, let's take a look at them. Can I teach this a few moments? Let me give you these four points. Let's take a look at the ask. The ask in the previous chapter and in other places, folks have messed up the ask part in Scripture. They have turned the ass into, Jesus would say, long prayers in the city court where men could, could, could get attention. They were, they were making these long prayers and they were, they were, so people could think they were religious. And Jesus said, instead of trying to get the attention of folk, you should have been trying to get the attention of God. Uh, you, you're, trying, you're, trying for, you're trying to be seen by men when you really want to be, need to be sick in the face of God. He said, your long, drawn-out prayers ain't going nowhere but up to the ceiling and back down at you. And he said, when all you simply need to do is ask. God wasn't hard to get. God isn't resistant to his people. God is not deaf. God isn't like the pagan gods. No, God is a loving God, a generous God, a kind God. He's a loving father, God who wants the best for his children. All you got to do is ask. Don't, don't make it complicated. You don't need to have all these certain prayer words and do all this jumping on. No, no. You just need to ask God. He already knows what you need. Look, he's, all, he's a good God. He already has it in place for you. He knows what you need before you even ask it. We'll see that when we read in the next few weeks. God simply says it like my mom used to say. Did you ask? Uh, my mom would, would, mom would have uh, treats and stuff ready for us. and She would buy goodies from the store, uh, but she bought the goodies. It was her house. It was her pantry. Uh, my dad worked hard. It, was, it, it belonged to them. Their money went into buying the resource. Their efforts went into procuring uh, the, 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 the accoutrements and, and fun stuff uh, that we had to play. Their resources, their abilities, their talents that allowed us to have what we had. And so it wasn't my place to just go and take something. Oh, no, it, it, no, no, no. And it wasn't because she didn't already have it in the house. She said, it, it, she said you, you, I'm supposed to ask because it wasn't mine. It was hers. She bought it. It was disrespectful to take something that wasn't mine without asking for it. Uh, uh, brother, brother, brother Green, God simply says, ask, because the blessing I want, the blessings I want aren't mine. Y'all didn't hear that. They belong to God. It's just, watch this, respectful 
to ask before you take some that you didn't buy, purchase, or belong to you. Uh, we want God's favor. We want God's grace. We want God's forgiveness. We want God's mercy. We want God's abundance. We want God's provision. He has all of it. Don't make it complicated. Just simply ask for God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's provision in your life. God already has what you want. He said, he said what a father. He said, he, he said, like, if you who are evil, talking about us in the world, still know how to give good gifts, uh, how much more does your father in heaven who loves you more than you'll ever know want to give you? We made God out to be some meanie. We made God out to be somebody who don't want the best for us, but I'm here to let you know God has everything for you that you need, everything you have, everything you need. He's got healing power. He's got miracles. Just ask. He's got power and anointing. Just ask. It belongs to him. It's just a respectful thing to do. To ask because it all belongs to God. Even though he has it before you ask, even though he already knows what you need, it's just proper to ask. That's humility. That's, that's respect. That's reverence. That's honoring God for who he is. Because the reality is God had to move heaven and earth for some stuff for you. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just respectful. And re Jesus says, in how we govern our relationship with the Lord, we must see God as a holy father, an awesome father, a wonderful father. He's holy. That means he deserves all our respect and honor and reverence, but he is our father. That means he's a good daddy. He has everything that we need. You may not have had a good daddy on earth, but you cannot compare your bad daddy on earth to the good daddy in heaven. Oh, he's a good daddy. Oh, he loves you more. He is a good daddy. He shows up when he needs to show up. He's there when he needs to be there. He listens when he needs to live. He provides everything he needs to provide. He takes care of you before you even knew you needed. He provided it before you even asked for it. He's a good daddy. And all you got to do with a good daddy is just ask respectfully. That's all you got to do. It's just respectful to ask. Jesus said, y'all made this relationship with Jesus. Can you, admit, you made this relationship complicated. Y'all got the folk thinking you got to have a certain a prayer language. You got to have the folk thinking you got to be able to, to jump through hoops. You got to folk thinking they got to have all certain words. You got to folk thinking they got to have everything together before they can go to God. No, he's a good daddy. And he always wants you to come to him. That's why the Hebrew writer said that we ought to boldly come to the throne of grace. What Jesus is saying, oh, they've made it difficult to get to God. They've made it complicated to get to God. But no, no, the doors have been open. You ought to be running to sit down with the, the master and talk to the Lord. His door is open. Oh, he's saying, he's saying you know, don't, don't be afraid to ask the Lord. Don't think you, don't, you can't come before God. God has more grace and more mercy and more love than you can ever imagine. Don't hesitate. He said, the relationship with God is something about asking because he has everything we stand in need of. Uh, it's not complicated. Just ask. Let me give you the other one. The second thing is seek. True seeking in the teachings of Jesus was contrasted to the wrong seeking done in the community at large. They were praying wrong, but they were also seeking God wrong. They were seeking fleshly pleasure, material possession, and popularity. Jesus contrasts this false teaching and redirects their, sink, their seeking. They have ventured off the course, and they need their GPS to reroute them to correct their path. And Jesus teaches them they needed to seek the kingdom of God. And God's righteousness, not the popularity of man, not their fleshly desires, not materialism, but seek God and his righteousness, and everything you desire will be found in him. If we, in God, we can find our delights. In, in God, we can find the real attention that we need, not from man, but from God Almighty. In God, we can find the possession of the possession of the world will fade. The things don't last. But real riches can be obtained in living for the Lord and abiding in Christ. Because when you abide in Christ, what God gives you, the joy that God gives you, the peace that God gives you, money can't buy. Thieves can't steal and rust do not fade away. Seek true riches. The same way you seek in the natural. He says we ought to be seeking in the, in the spirit. If we simply seek God in prayer, seek God in his word, seek God in worship, we will discover that which our souls really long for is found in Christ. We must seek the Lord, as David said, like a deer who looks for water. 
We must seek the Lord like I was seeking a deal yesterday at the mall. We funeralized my aunt, 90 years, great woman of God, and we were heading back 95. Normally, we take 301. But 95, we were taking 95, and then, and then I told my wife, I said, I know there's a couple of outlet stores I like to go to, Potomac Mills. And, and I was looking for a particular a pair of pants and some shoes. I wanted some shoes, and I wanted a pair of pants, and amen, because I tell my wife I need school clothes. I'm back to teaching now. I need school clothes, amen. Got to get my school clothes. And so I was looking for a pair of corduroys, amen, because I'll be out there at recess. I need something that the wind don't blow through, amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. So I wanted a particular pair, and I wanted some dress shoes. My dress shoes are kind of getting kind of old and torn out, let me get an upgrade, and I like to go to the outlet store, try to get a deal. So I, I told me, I said, well, they got one store, they got the Norse's Rack on one end, and then they got uh, the Polo store on the other end. I was going to try to catch all those stores in between, amen. And so I told my wife, she didn't want to, I said, give me 15 minutes. I, I'm looking for my deal, amen. I know what I'm looking for. It's a big mall, but I know what I'm looking for, amen. Uh, Yasmin, I started at Nor uh, Norson's Rack, amen. I walked quickly through the shoe department. They ain't have nothing because I got I wear 13s and 14. That's size and small, so I can look five minutes. They ain't got nothing I want, amen. They ain't had no corduroys I want. I slipped on through. I then went to that store, went to that store, went to that store, and I seen these polo jeans on sale. They online. They was $168. Then they were, they might have been. Not, they were, I thought I could get them on sale for 99. And so I said, well, let me walk in there. I'm going to see if I, I had a coupon. Hallelujah. I had a coupon. Amen. I had searched this store. I was searching that store. I was searching this store. And then I get to the back. And I went through the polo store one time. Then I went back through it. Then seen, I went back again. And in the back, I saw uh, Brother Fleming on the rack. They had two corduroys, a size 36 and a size 40. I'm right in the middle, but I can work with the 40. Amen. I said, ooh. I said, so what I did, amen, Sister Karen, I flipped the tag over. And it had the 99. And then it had 49. I said, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I had a coupon. And so I went up there. They were $168 on, on, online, $99 at the outlet, marked down to $49 because it was the last two. And I had a coupon. I said, I said, sister girl was at the register. And I looked at her. She looked at me. I said, does my coupon work for this too? She said, yes, it does. She scanned it. Hallelujah. And she said, $25. I said, thank you, Jesus. $25. I was seeking that sale. I was seeking that thing. You should have seen me walking through Potomac Mill. I went from one end of the mall to the other in 19 minutes flat because I was seeking something. And beloved, can I help you when you're seeking God? You can, wear, you, you'll, you'll waddle through the stuff that you ain't looking for. You'll get through the stuff that ain't fitting you. You'll find what you need. And I'm here to let you know, you seek God on Sunday. You seek God on Monday. You seek God on Tuesday. And you'll find that God got a blessing right in store for you. He got some coupons of grace. You can use some coupons of love. You can use some coupons Coupons of joy that get you just what you need and give you a little bit better than what you were asking or expecting. But if you seek him, I'm here to let you know you got to seek the Lord. Uh, we, see, we, most of us don't put that kind of intent. I'm looking for something from God. I want to know God more. I want to know him more. I want to know him more. So we got to ask. And you can ask God. God says, I got it. Just ask. Seek. You shall find the same way you will find a sale. And some of y'all are professional shoppers. The same energy you put into that. If you put that kind of energy in seeking God, you'll find something better than you expected. See, we seek the pleasures of the world when we really ought to be seeking God. Jesus said, that's what it is. He said, they got these Pharisees, religious leaders, Sadducees, and all these other really folks, and, and not all of them, but just some of them. They have made this thing complicated. No, it's just every day, God, I want to know more about you. God, I want to, let me seek your word. Let me, let me pray. Let me ask God to show me more and more every day. It's not, it's not complicated. It's not complicated. Well, let me, let me finish up. Let me finish up. Then he says, he gets to the not complicated part. And then he, he, says, he says, just seek him. Just seek him. Then he says, knock. Yeah. Now, this simply means it's about persistence. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop asking. 
keep knocking. We can't settle for some of God. We must keep knocking and seeking more of God. Knocking is about knowing God more and more. Do you want more of God? Do you want more of his power? Do you want more of his grace? Do you want more of his favor? Do you want more of his strength? The Lord says, keep knocking. Guess what? Because every time you knock, I'm going to open the door. Go through. And listen, the, the idea of what I saw was, this is what I saw. This is what I saw, Brother May. I saw a series of doors like levels. I knocked on one, got in it. And the Lord said, you want to go further? Knock on the next one. It's open. All you got to do is knock on it. Keep going. And you keep going through door and door and door. And in my mind, I saw the Lord saying, you want to keep growing, just keep on knocking. And I'm going to open the door for another level for you to grow in God, for you to be stronger and more, and, and more mature in the faith. But there's levels. God said, but if you stop knocking, Stop seeking and stop asking. You're not going to find. You're not going to receive. But it says, keep on seeking me. Keep on searching after me. Come on. I've got more for you. I want to open up more doors for your understanding, more doors for your maturity, more doors for your growth, more doors for you to become a better disciple of me. But you got to keep on knocking. He said, it's not complicated. It's not complicated. He says, knock. He said, he said, I'm telling you around, all you got, the door is op- will be open for you. You just got to knock. So, Lord, I want to know more about you. I want to know more about you. He said, the door, come on. Come on in. Come on in. You want to know more? Come on in. And then he, then he sums it up. Then he says this. He says, not only says this, it's about asking, seeking, and knocking. That's how we are to be with the Lord. He says, it's not complicated. Just ask God for more. Just seek God more. Just be persistent. Knock. The Lord, I want, is there more? For this? Should I know more? It's about you being persistent and consistent and intentional and not stopping. And this is, so that's how we are govern our relationship with the Lord. It's a relationship with a heavenly father who knows what you need before you ask of it. But he just wants you to ask because that's a respectful thing to do. He's holy. He's reverent. It belongs to him. At least you can do is what? Ask. But he has so much for you. You need to keep seeking him. He has so much more for you, you need to keep knocking. That's how our relationship with God should be governed. Then he said, but then we don't want to be only focused on our relationship with the Lord and miss out that if we have a real relationship with God, it ought to affect how we relate to others. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. You should have shouted on the second point, but this is a fourth point. Amen. Let me go. The idea is this, is that the reality is you ought to just treat folk the way you would want them to be treated, want them to treat you. It's real simple. That means I need to respect you, honor you, love you, forgive you. I want to be forgiven. I got to be forgiven to you. I want to be paid. I want people to have patience with me. I've got to show patience. I want folk to be kind to me. I need to be kind to them. I want folk to be gentle with me. I need to be gentle with them. I need somebody to hold me accountable. So I should be able to hold you accountable. In the same way you, I hold you accountable, you should be able to hold me accountable. The idea, we ought to treat one another the way we would want to be treated. You want somebody to be kind to you and merciful to you and show you grace, you got to be kind and merciful and show them grace. Hallelujah. You can't be mean and honorary and then expect somebody to want to show you grace. He said, no, it ain't that complicated. What you give out is what you're going to get. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Don't expect somebody, amen, to do you right if you're not trying to do them right. You you're not going to be a loving husband. How you, how you expect your wife to be loving? You want to be a loving wife? You got to be a loving husband. You got to love one another. You want to treat one another. You got to be kind. You can't be on an organization, be on a ministry, and not try to work with one another. You want folks to work with you? You got to work with everybody else. Amen. You can't be first all the time. Sometimes you got to be last. You can't be served all the time. Sometimes you got to be served. Amen. You got to serve. Amen. You got to do the serve. But the idea is you got to treat people like you want them to be treated. Jesus said, y'all can have all the rules and all the regulations. It boils down to this. You just got to be nice. You got to be kind. You got to be generous. You got to be patient. You got to treat folk the way you would want to be treated. It ain't complicated. Like Lauren Hill. You know, it shouldn't be this hard. Amen. It, you know, it, 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 it sounds, so, it, it, it should just be simple. It could all be so simple, beloved, in the church. It could all be so simple. We've made this thing out too complicated. It could all be kind of, it's all so simple. Love, love God, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's not complicated. Stand to your feet. Come on, choir. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord is your Savior, but you want to know God, you want to know God more, 
You don't maybe not. You maybe you're looking for a church home and you you want a church home. We're not a perfect church because no such thing. But we're trying our best. And if you believe the Lord is leading you to be part of this church, that means you don't need to hesitate. You need to come on. If you, you're ready to give your life to Christ, declare your allegiance to the Lord, confess him publicly, you're ready to turn your life over to Christ, get saved, come right now. Don't hesitate. There may be one today. If you're watching online, you can call us, 804-232-5124. There should be a number on the screen. Our ministers are at the phones now. Amen. Um, and get, if, just go ahead and uh, hit that message that goes right to the, I think, the office. It'll ring, in the, ring at the, uh, on the church line. But we want to pray with you and talk to you about your relationship with the Lord if you're watching us virtually and you don't know the Lord. But if you're under the sound of my voice in this building and you're ready to make a decision for Christ, whether it's by membership or, or joining for the first time or transferring membership, you, you need a new church home, come right now. We'll be more than excited to welcome you to be part of our church and to welcome you in to the family of faith. Is there one today as the choir sings, just let the Lord speak to your heart. Sing choir. Is there one today? Maybe you're a young person. You're ready to, to give your life to Christ. You feel the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you. Come. Maybe you're an older person. You know it's time for you to make a decision. You've been waiting a long time, but now it's, God has been moving on your life. He wants you to come now. Is there one come? Is there one? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I'm praying, Lord, for this church. I'm praying, Lord, for Second Baptist and our connection to everyone in the community. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, you'll continue to use us for your glory. Use us for your power. Use us in a mighty way to be a change agent in this community. To continue to advocate for affordable housing continue to advocate to stop the gun violence or let our fight not stop for you've called us to be a light into this world a city up high on a hill shining for all to see lord it's not our light but it's the light of you that shines in us and through us so let us be vessels for your glory vessels for your honor lord let's not make this stuff complicated for it's not complicated we ought to love you with all our heart mind soul and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves and treat others the way we would want to be treated. Bless us now as we go from this place, but never from your divine and holy presence. Be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, Amen, Amen. High five somebody and say, Neighbor, it's not that complicated. <laughs>